Ben Tramer has a fantastic future ahead of him. At least for the next eight hours or so. Hey there, I'm here to bone in your house while your daughter watches horror films. Poor Loomis, bet he wished he were with Ben Tramer tonight. So while your Jason Voorhees and your Madman Mars were busy teaching children that there's nothing more to life other than sex and death, Halloween 2 will bring slasher films back to its roots of slow-burning suspense and fantastic cinematography. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> or fuck it! Let's just blow some shit up! Meanwhile, Dr. Loomis is the calm yet very worried doctor from the first film, meaning he's an armed vigilante chasing down anyone who looks like Michael Myers. That is, if Michael Myers stopped for a bag of candy first. <laughs> Trick or treat, motherfucker! A real emergency comes in when Sheriff Brackett finds out his daughter Annie was one of the ones killed. <laughs> don't worry, I'm sure someone will stay with the burning corpse. This poor guy, though, I don't think he's gonna make it. He's young, maybe 17, maybe 18. Michael Myers is 21. Oh yeah? Well, the ending credits says that he's 23. One thing is definitely for sure in this film, Dr. Loomis can't count. There, this'll show Michael Myers trash his already trashed house. Somehow, I think he'd be more offended if they actually cleaned up the place. And it's not like anyone important was killed. Mr. Hunt? Yeah, what is it, Craig? Yeah, I'm worried about Bennett Tramer. He isn't home yet. Yeah, and he left the party at 10. He was real drunk. How old is he? 17. He had this stupid mask on. Wait, Ben Tramer? The Ben Tramer? <laughs> I'd rather go with Ben Tramer. Ben Tramer? Now Lori has to settle for Lance Guest? And why am I being so mean to Lance Guest? And fuck you people and your smiling faces. Fucking Ben Tramer just died, you insensitive pricks. If you're wondering why the nurse showed up, it's to tell Loomis why he's a terrible doctor. Dr. Loomis, this thing is all over the state. The patient escapes once, murders three teenagers. You shoot him with a gun, he escapes again. Nope, not buying it. This guy was so not a teenager. And no love for dead truck guy? And at least Michael didn't have a hand in offing Ben Tramer, you insensitive prick. Listen, um, I can't find anybody. Bud's gone. Mrs. Alves is gone. And no one seems to be worried that we have zero patients. Doesn't anyone else find this weird? And this lady doesn't count. This actually has nothing to do with Michael Myers. It's just a Ben Tramer blood donation that went terribly wrong. Hey, wouldn't it be funny if they put her in the ambulance and then just parked and took her back out? She's gonna need another stiff cocktail once they tell her what happened to Ben Tramer. This must be what set Lori onto her goth phase. Hell, maybe Ben's in the ambulance with her. This movie completely missed the point of everything that made the first film great, which was the impending romance of Lori Strode and Ben Tramer, who they abruptly killed off in the first act of this film. See? The people on the IMDb message boards get it, asking, who's the bigger drunk, Ben Tramer or Dr. Mixture? Well, to my knowledge, Ben Tramer wasn't operating on anyone, so I believe that Dr. Mixture is in the wrong here. Or how about Ben Tramer dressed as Michael Myers? Why? Hmm? Well, sure, sure. Blame the victim. Also, it was already established in the first one that the pale-faced William Shatner mask was a hot item at the time, so why wouldn't he be wearing that? A decade ago, Halloween night, he murdered 16 people, maybe more, trying to get to his sister. Nearly got it, too. But his doctor, of all people, shot him six times. Thank you. That's for the one guy in the audience who hasn't seen Halloween 1 and 2, but for some reason is going to see Halloween 4. 
Plus, the poster already gave us a recap. I believe it means it's been ten years since the loss of Ben Tramer. Thank you very much. And we still haven't gotten a proper Ben Tramer memorial in Haddonfield. Loomis goes to see Sheriff Meeker, who will beat the shit out of Michael, just as he did his son, Henry Hill. Myers has been locked up since before she was born. He's never laid eyes on her. I understand why they're skeptical. They were skeptical last time, too. And what was the worst that happened? <laughs> All right! Sixteen dead people! They go searching for Jamie, but I hope they put an extra guard on Ben Tramer's family just to be safe. Now give them a chance. Maybe they got something. Shit, Earl. It's Ted Hollister. Ted Hollister? You prick! That's Ben Tramer's cousin! You dumb son of a bitch. You said you saw Myers. Well, if you can't trust a redneck with a gun when he said he saw something, who can you trust? They break into the local school where Michael tries to be hip by putting on a Simon Labonte mask instead. It's one of the scenes in the movie where he's wearing a blonde wig that was originally used before switching to the Pat Riley mask. The blonde wig was changed when it was deemed too disrespectful to Ben Tramer. Good choice. She's a virgin. Got her phone number? Hmm, better than when Michael talked in that Rob Zombie movie. Wait, that's not Michael. Hey, just a little Halloween prank, okay? <laughs> Definitely not funny. Damn right it's not funny. It's this kind of reckless endangerment that got Ben Tramer killed, which you all seem to be forgetting, and I expect maturity out of this bunch. Spitz. Spitz. Oh good, we're about to find out how Michael prefers his oral sex. Oh, for the love of God, enough with the damn fake-outs. Ben Tramer is spinning in his grave. And don't even get me started on how this film neglected to mention the murder of Ted Hollister. I beg of you, don't let your family suffer the same fate that Laurie and her daughter suffered. Not to mention Ben Tramer. And whose fault was that, Dr. Loomis? Over at Tommy's place, we still get the hilarious Tommy-centric 1978 headlines. Though one of them should have read, Local Teen Ben Tramer Killed in Possibly Unrelated Accident. <laughs> However, Michael made one mistake. He crossed Alex Cross. Oh, and Loomis is dead in this universe, too. Probably because Donald Pleasance died before the release of Halloween 6. Which sort of makes sense for this series to be rebooted. Not that either of these universes matter, because Ben Tramer is dead in both of them. So what's the point of even living? Plus, Lori gets to stay behind, too, with Bruce Wayne. Wait, 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 wait. Place of employment. Sorry, I, I, I just, I needed a fix. There is still smoke coming from Ben Tramer's body. <laughs> If you are not blonding your hair in remembrance of the fallen Ben Tramer, then you are Halloweening wrong. And if the Halloween movie that you picked is Halloween Resurrection, you're also Halloweening wrong. It's the classic Michael move of placing the blame on someone else. That's why we all thought this old lady did the 1978 massacre. That is classic Rosenthal. No, seriously, Halloween 2's director Rick Rosenthal returns to direct this film. Why? So he can kill Ben Tramer again? But something here sounds familiar. Did you see the boogeyman or something? The boogeyman? How very young he is. Dr. Mixter's class? I'm taking that course too. Dr. Mixture? The guy who got the needle in the eye? If he survived, that means there's still hope for Ben Tramer! Look, I can dream, alright? What year is this taking place? And what the fuck? Give Ben Tramer his mask back! Ooh, wait. 
That means Ben Tramer is alive in this universe. It was right of Rob Zombie to hit the reset button. I got a Taco Deluxe Supreme talking back at me, so I'm gonna be a while. You mind waiting somewhere else and let me pass this beast in peace? Poetry. This is Joe Grizzly. He's the Ben Tramer of this universe. In that no justice was served for Joe Grizzly. He's a man who just loves his hair and his knives and his truck. But I just have to keep telling myself that Ben Tramer is still alive in this universe. Surely they won't do something to tarnish his name. That I talked to Paul about his buddy Ben Tramer. Ah, they said Ben Tramer was retarded. Yeah, but he's not short bus retarded or anything. What? He said, and I quote, Dude, she's fucking hot. First Halloween 2 kills Ben Tramer, and then this one slanders him. I don't know what's worse. Okay, never mind Ben Tramer. What the fuck? A Jamie Lloyd nude scene? This movie is weird! Not only is Ben Tramer still alive in Halloween 2, but so is Caroline Williams from Stepfather 2. Worlds are colliding here. Sure, we could show Malcolm McDowell being awesome. You don't need my shit. I put up with your shit 24-7. Back the fuck off. But let's cut back to something shitty. If Ben Tramer could see Lori now, he'd wish he got hit by a car and blown up. This series now has more timelines than Lost. And I think Lori has been resurrected more times than Michael has. Sure, that does mean that the timeline is once again being reset to save the life of Ben Tramer, but after watching these two Rob Zombie films, what I'm really mad at is there was absolutely no justice for Joe fucking Grizzly! Two failed marriages, rocky relationship with your daughter and granddaughter. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This movie is my dream come true. If part two doesn't exist in this timeline, that means that not only is Ben Tramer still alive, but he was once married to Lori. Granted, they don't actually say Ben Tramer by name, but it was totally him. The other husband was probably this guy, or Bud. Sorry. I guess I just fuck up all the time. Yeah, you effed up your marriage, bro. Ben Tramer was a way better husband to Lori. Look! It's him! Here we go. No, that's Ben Tramer's grandson. You're about to make the same mistake again. Oh, phew. The younger generations of Tramers are safe. hospital doesn't even offer a nose job. That's not going to be covered by his insurance. <laughs> However, the hospital does have a burn unit, even for robot Ben Tramer. I want to be a Tokyo convertible, too. Mainly so I can drive myself off a cliff. Courtney has a crush on the handsome Matt. I can tell you right away that he's no Ben Tramer. Hi, Matt. Hi. Really, you give these simpler things far too much credit. <laughs> Except to get Ben Tramered as they cross the road. <laughs> Too soon. Jason's body is taken to the nearest morgue all the way in Ohio. The twist is that he isn't really dead because look, Kane Hodder is right fucking there. Embarrassment is gonna strike when they realize they accidentally blew up Ken Tramer. Maybe it is a bad idea. How do they not notice the bloody title of the movie? First things first, must check dental records to make sure not Ben Tramer doll. <laughs> 
Still, I'm glad to see more love given to Roy. He even has his own action figure now. Roy is like the Ben Tramer of the Friday the 13th series. That is, if Ben Tramer also started killing people. Thank you.